Now we are far away from season three of Only Murders in the Building, but you know I can't help but theorize on who done it. Hi, my name's Dallas, and this is all my favorite things from the screen, and I'm gonna tell you who I think killed Ben Glenroy. Before I go over my top three suspects, let's quickly go over my assumption of how Ben was killed and a few other details and ideas that may come up in season three. Ben was poisoned. We see blood around his mouth. This was actually hinted at just a few moments earlier when we see a poster with a set of lips bleeding outside of Ben's dressing room. The poster also has the word orchid on it. It could be a hint to the fact that he was poisoned by some type of fruit. Phytolotica americana, also known as American pokeweed, is something commonly found all around areas of the East Coast, including New York City, and it is very poisonous. And though I don't think it was this specific plant, I do believe that Ben was poisoned by ingesting some sort of tea. This is from the multiple teapots that we see laying around the scene. Ben begins coughing when he enters the stage, and fog is being spread out. It would be pretty interesting to have something he ingested react with the fog, but that may be too complicated. The show likes to keep things as simple as possible. Either way, coughing up blood is usually a sign of some sort of respiratory irritant. This seems more likely as we see him coughing quite a bit before he collapses. This scene takes place a year after the arrest of Becky Butler for the murder of Bunny Folger. This gives the characters time to evolve in ways that we may not have been able to see. They likely had new challenges that they have overcome or yet to. There isn't much insight on what their lives have been like for the last year. We do see that Mabel has reconciled with Alice and that they paint over Mabel's mural showing a new beginning for Mabel and that all bets are off in this new season. Not that we should forget about this cast of characters, but I think many of them may not be the focus of this season. The second season used Poppy as a critique for the culture of true crime as entertainment, and it seems that the third season may tackle Broadway. It's had its fair share of deaths on stage and issues within the community. I think it will be interesting to see how Broadway is shown in the next season, especially with many people working on the show being members of the community. We know that Ben was poisoned, but when was Ben poisoned? I think as the title of the show suggests, the murder has to take place inside of the building. Now this could mean that Ben himself was staying in the Arconia. I don't think that he will be staying in Sting's apartment and they will likely leave that for another revolving character. I think it's more likely that he was visiting someone such as Oliver, the show's producer, before the show. The elephant in the room, we know that Charles and Ben, though co-stars in this Broadway show, do not get along with each other. Charles tells Ben, do what's smart, stay away from her. And there are only a few hers that we know of that this statement could pertain to. Mabel, Joy, his makeup artist and turned lover, and Lucy, his quasi stepdaughter, who's come back into his life. Everything we have heard about Lucy's mother hasn't been the best, but I think that Ben Glenroy seems too young to have been in a relationship with her, and his profession doesn't exactly mix with what we know of her, so I don't think it would have anything to do with the familial issue with Lucy. We do see Lucy with the headset and crew tags while on the set of Brazos, and I'm not sure Charles has ever done Broadway before. It is obvious Oliver got Charles apart. He could have also gotten a crew job for Lucy. Maybe something happened between the two of them. Joy has been the makeup artist for Charles for many years. She could likely have worked with Ben in the past, or even on the set of this show. With whatever happened between them, causing her to quit, but she will still show up to support her paramour. Either of these characters are likely the her Charles was talking about, and it would not be out of the ordinary for either to be in the Arconia. They could have easily poisoned him in the apartment building before the show. I may have stated this before, but I must add that the murder of Bunny had no direct link to our podcasters other than they were framed. 
None of their actions had anything to do with the crime. Likewise, Tim Kono's murder had nothing to do with the actions of Mabel or even Teddy and Theodemus. There are still some strange things going on about that case particularly and Jan. We'll get into that in another video. The thing is, what seems like important information to the killings, black market jewelry theft, the paintings of Charles' father's balls, and I'm guessing whatever Ben did to her, whomever she may be, is another great storyline, but ultimately a red herring to throw us off and likely will not have any direct link to the crime. That means we are looking for someone else. Someone who may have some unseen ties to Ben Glenroy. Women have been the killers in the first two seasons. I would think that they may try to change things and have a male as a killer for the third season. And I've got two candidates. My first is our favorite resident's new boyfriend, Jonathan. Jonathan works in the theater scene in New York. He is currently a hyena in the production of The Lion King. Though he seems a little younger than Ben, it's likely that Jonathan at least knows who Ben is and it's possible that their paths may have crossed. Maybe it wasn't on good terms. Howard could have done something to get back at him for actions that Ben has done to Jonathan in the past. Maybe he stunted his career. The possibilities are endless in that fashion. There is another person who has definitely heard of Ben Glenroy and may have worked with him in the past, and that is Teddy Demas. Teddy was a staple in Broadway. With a big name like Ben Glenroy, the two have likely crossed paths and may even work together in the past. Though Teddy didn't kill Tim Kono and was awaiting trial for other charges, a year has passed. A man of such means likely has a great lawyer, and I can see him getting off easy for his crimes. If he and his son are out of jail, for whatever reason, I think Teddy likely has the biggest ties to Ben Glenroy and for some reason decided he had to do him in. But what do you guys think? Did Teddy kill Ben? Was it Jonathan? Who do you guys think killed Ben Glenroy? Let's discuss. My name is Dallas. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the roof.